a lovely lovely lot hey diddling welcome to my team talks i'm back again i'm on a bit of a roll aren't i <laughs> that's the kind of idea it's good it's good um and I'm, I'm always kind of trying to decide what I'm going to talk about next because, like I've said before, there's loads of things that I want to talk about because uh, I'm passionate about recovery, mental health, um, growth, um, evolving, all, all that stuff. And um, so I'm like, well, should I do this next or do that next or whatever? And then I'd had a conversation with a friend this week. So I get inspired, all right? And... Um, and that's the best way, really, because it's kind of, it's real in, in now time, you know, it's kind of what's going on for me at the minute or, or what's come up for me. And um, and it's about fear and, and facing fear. Um, and so I want to talk about it because it, it really, um, it's a big part of my life, fear. Um, and I want to talk about why we need to face it and what I learned and after learning how important it is to face my fears and how it's absolutely changed my world and how I live um, and that I am alive today. Um, you know, sort of my experience of that. Yeah, you can read it in a textbook and we understand it. And there's lots of literature about facing your fears, um, feel the fear and do it anyway. Um, Daring Greatly by Brené Brown. Um, there's lots of kind of uh, material out there. So if you do struggle with fear, um, then I suggest or I promote, you know, facing facing your fears. Um, it's done so much for me and I, and I want to kind of in this video capture why it means so much. Now, for me, um, I because I face my fears today, I can call myself brave and courageous. And that's one of the things that I don't shy away from. There's certain things like when I get compliments, I still can struggle a bit today. Um, and with myself, my my low self-esteem, it's actually um, good self-esteem today, but I have to work on it. Um, but I can say, I'm happy to say that I'm brave and courageous. And I, you know, I wear that. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Um, because I have faced huge fear in my life. Um, and um, the obvious one is that I um, put down the drink, right? An alcoholic who put down the drink. That's the most scariest, terrifying thing in my whole life, probably, that I'll ever face. Um, to, to comprehend living a life without drink, the thing that was my crutch that, that got me through, first of all, you know, my fear of people and what they thought of me, and it kind of brought those barriers down and... Uh, those inhibitions and so I felt free um, but also when you know I'd think about well you know what if one day I get married and I won't be able to toast my at my own wedding or going on holiday without a drink or getting to the airport and not having a drink and all those things that kind of feel ridiculous to me now but they wasn't they weren't you know they, it's all relative and it mattered to me and it felt terrifying to think about life without it but like anything it's, you know, if I'm going to stop a behaviour or, or an addiction, the pain of staying where I am has to be greater than the pain of giving that thing up or, or that movement. And that's really the same with fear, right? And that, well, that is, that is it. That's the concept of it, that I've got to want it enough and I've got to have enough pain. Now, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm motivated by pain unfortunately some people are toward motivated so they see a goal and then that can change their behavior because they're so um motivated to achieve that whereas me it seems like a lot of the time big changes in my life have to come with pain right unfortunately <laughs> god give me strength <laughs> but anyway kind of we're all different right now um and the other thing was becoming a teacher. So I'm really thirsty today. <laughs> now I was in my twenties, um, and I remember being at the college um, where I was going to have my career, and having the university lecturer come and assess me while I was delivering a class. And it's not like just a twenty-minute, half-hour class. Like this was a two-hour class. 
and the pressure oh unbelievable pressure because you know for anyone I think talking in front of people is scary anyway let alone having to hold a classroom and do so many different kind of um dynamics hold different dynamics in that classroom but then having someone observe you know and they're writing down all the time anyway and on the way i remember my i think it was my first assessment um I, yeah um she come uh, along and i remember driving to college and thinking i need to turn around just turn around and go home just turn around and go home i was that scared but i you know there was something in me that took me of course and it's because i wanted to be a teacher and i knew that I'd be good at it and I'd enjoy it, but it was just that that pressure. And so, you know, facing those fears and that got me um, that career. And I do love teaching and, you know, passing on, sharing knowledge, that kind of thing. So, um, and I continued then in my recovery because then I kind of learned about me and my, uh, um, my issues, um, they call it in the, in the defects of character. I've got a few defects of character. Um, and one of them being um, people pleasing. Now, it sounds quite rose tinted, doesn't it? I've sort of sprinkled a bit of sugar on that. People pleasing, people -pleasing is deceitful and dishonest, right? When it, when it boils down to it. Um, and it's quite cowardly. And that's not having a go at myself or anyone that people pleases. It's just scared to be me to say no to share exactly what's going on uh codependency i want if the other person feels okay then i feel okay um yeah and it's just a behavior that i had to really work hard on yeah so so people pleasing was was one now i i don't expect of myself or anybody else to face all your fears we've all got many barriers and issues and boundaries and things that are going on defects of character whatever you want to call them are often to protect ourselves right so they don't come from malice or evil it's um survival usually um so i don't expect myself to face all my fears at once absolutely not um i haven't got the capacity for that I haven't got the strength for that and I don't think any human has and I think we pick the areas that are relevant at the time if we choose to face our fear so basically it's about picking and choosing you know what what's affecting my life today what is holding me back um what's affecting my family or my friends and my lifestyle how do I want to change that um, what are my strengths and my weaknesses uh, and what are the weaknesses that are really affecting me today that I want to change um, and deal with that and the rest can wait <laughs> um, so what I want to talk about today is just how powerful it is to to face those fears because um, look like I always say, you know, um, courage is not the absence of fear. It's that you feel the fear, but you do it anyway. Because it's not very fucking brave if I'm not scared. <laughs> to do something in my, if I'm not scared, there's no, you know, courage or bravery in that, right? That's a good start, right? If we're feeling fear, we know we, it's, a, it's a chance for us to practice bravery uh, and courage. Now look, fear... We can all also, you know, um, pathologize fear, um, like we do sadness, right? So we can feel sad about being sad, and then that becomes extreme, and then we can label that as depression. Um, and fear is anxiety. If we pathologize fear, it's anxiety, right? Now, I think, you know, and I think we know that fear is a part of life. Fear is... Um, how we grow it's what keeps us safe sometimes it's a warning sign but that can be kind of um misunderstood and especially as we've evolved that we haven't necessarily got the same fears the natural fears that we would had like a predator before saber tooth tiger say uh we knew what our fear was in today as we've evolved there's so many things that we can be afraid of right um and so it's knowing what's real and what's not and and being aware of those times when we can face our fears uh, and evolve uh, and times when we need more support um 
but I think we'll know to that level we'll know there's certain areas of our life and like I mentioned people pleasing for me was one that I could discuss with people I needed good people around me so that I could uh, get feedback and have that support and bookend it so if I was doing something to stretch and to grow and to face those fears that I would tell them I was going to do it and then I'd be accountable by sharing it with someone else and then come back and share how I felt and how that went etc and then I wasn't alone with it because of course part of fear is our self-critic and our um, negative self-talk um, our overthinking that will tell us oh you did something bad or uh, you shouldn't have said that or you're not very nice or you didn't handle that very well could have said this could have should have would all right all that shit <laughs> um that's all part of it because what what our psyche wants to do is kind of keep us safe which means keep us comfortable which means keep us in the same place and so we can be fooled to think that we shouldn't do it and that's what i'll call that that overthinking and self-critic is the emotional hangover so it used to happen when i would face someone like and i'd say something that i'd be afraid to say but i'd say it and then i'd leave that situation and be like overthinking and shouldn't have said that you know, that i could have said this better or was that mean or how are they feeling all that codependency all that stuff that's the sort of hangover from it. Now, that's the stuff I've got to feel and face and sit with, sit with that discomfort, because then if I sit with that discomfort, it will get easier. And it's a lie. It's all a fucking lie. And that's what I would have listened to before. Um, but I have to understand that, right? I have to understand that my self-critic and all that stuff that comes up after is not the truth. Um, and, and then what happened with my people pleasing is that I continued to, so what I'd do is I'd, I'd be in a situation and someone might say something and I want to say something like no, or that's not okay, but I wouldn't say it and I'd smile and that's okay and then leave and then go, oh, but then go, right, I was, what would I have said in that situation if I could have done, if I was brave enough? And I would work that out, what I would want to say. And, and a lot of it actually is about language. We don't have the language to cover what we want to say. It's like we don't know how to say it. So it's also not just about how we feel. It's about knowing what to say and when to say so it feels right. Because we've never owned our shit before, right? So we haven't got the language around it. So I'd work out what that is. And sometimes I would need someone to discuss this with just to make sure I'd got it right. And then I would go back to that situation and say that to that person. And that took, oh my God, I, I remember being terrified. And it's because I want to be liked. Um, because I was afraid that if you didn't like me, I'm not worthy. And that's what that told me. I'm not worthy. You don't like me. It's, therefore, that's evidence that I'm not likeable. Um, and I'd learned enough that that wasn't the truth. So I, I now was putting myself in a situation and saying that thing. Now, I would get that after uh, effect, that hangover, and I'd feel it. But I also understood that was part of me growing, that I didn't have to listen to that, that I would sit there and I'd feel it and it'd feel uncomfortable. Um, but I got comfortable with being uncomfortable, if you like. I understood how powerful that was. And of course, then I found after I kept doing this, that I would say what I wanted to say in the moment. And it was like a fucking miracle. It's like, oh, okay. Because, you know, because look, the resentment that can build up, if I'm not honest with people around me, um, then it sits with me and I feel resentful. And I feel resentful with myself, with that person. And then I'm doing things I don't want to do. And it's a waste of my energy and my time. And so it's like clearing it all up and being me and being feeling strong in being me. Um, so that really changed things for me. Now I'm digressing, right? <laughs> the whole point, I, I think that's just an example that I'm giving you to explain that, you know, fear isn't always the obvious thing facing our fear. It's not always kind of um, what we think it is. For everybody, it's going to be different face if it's one of mine was that people pleasing, right? Because I feared not being liked. Um, and again, by the way, I can feel that today. Of course I can. But I understand it more and I know that I can speak up more these days. And I don't get that after effect. So 
facing my fears is fucking huge and I have to continue it on a daily basis. Um, and that's what gets me through. That's what gets me stronger. The, look, the, the, if we don't face our fear, then we have consequences of that, just like we all have consequences of facing our fears. A fear can have a huge impact on us. And so, and because I think evolutionary wise, we were, that was a good indicator. So I've just got attacked. That's about the game. I don't even want to know. Sorry. Anyway, I'm not going to discuss that. Let me put that on silent, shall I? Yeah, let's put it on silent. Well, let's talk about fear. So what does fear feel like? So we have the physiological side of fear, don't we? And then the, the thought process and that. So, we, you know, it's kind of we can feel nauseous. We can feel dizzy. We can be shaking. We get a dry mouth. Uh, the overthinking, the self critic, the inner critic, right? Um, we can f get butterflies in our stomach, we can get tightness in our chest. There's loads and loads of different um, feelings that we get from it. And it, rightly so, fear is scary, right? To face that stuff. But then what about, you know, if we don't face our fears, what, you know, what does that feel like? Well, we can get a bit stagnant, we can get a bit stuck in our ways and a bit bored. Um, there's no sense of achievement or movement or, you know, so that can feel, that can have a certainly have an impact on us in, on our psyche and our mental health, right? Uh, life can feel like Groundhog Day, um, and that can lead to depression, anxiety, etc. And I also believe that facing fear, we, I think Wim Hof says it, you know, there's a good amount of kind of stress on our body that we need to have. Wim Hof, you know, the breathing and the, um, ice baths. That it's good for our body because we went through we had stress on our body evolutionary wise obviously i'm talking about that we we had to feel that stuff we get comfortable being uncomfortable if you like because otherwise we're in a nice cozy home it's all nice and warm and and cozy and and so we feel a bit of cold and it's like oh, you know we, we need to feel it and that kind of goes for us psychologically as well now um so if we don't face our fear, that can have consequences itself. Facing fear will have consequences, but that's the physiological and the overthinking. But again, it's getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. But what do we gain from facing our fears? Well, that's endless, right? Well, growth. You get stronger. You get wiser. You learn new things. You build your self-esteem. You, you know, if it's facing anxiety, social anxiety, you start to get it out there. You start to create new opportunities. You feel better about yourself. You're a better role model. Your life opens up, you know, because without facing fear, it gets smaller and smaller. It doesn't just say the same. In fact, it'll get smaller because you start to feel it that you're not evolving and you're not growing. And we're meant to grow and evolve and learn and, and get wiser and stronger with life. You know, otherwise we're hiding away from it. And so it's so powerful and I've seen that, you know, and then you start to feel success and success. I don't mean I'm not kind of labeling success. Success for me is value, having value in my life, right? Having purpose and meaning in my life. Um, for everyone, it's different success, but success breeds success. And so by facing our fears, we're going to gain that stuff in life. Now, I also, you know, because if we've got like me, mental health issue, I need to be careful about how much fear I'm, I'm, um, I'm facing because it does have a cost. So I know when I'm ready to face something and I know when I'm not. And I, I suppose, hence this YouTube channel, I knew I'd, I'd done a first topic, or I'd done a lot of filming, but I didn't put it out there and I just wasn't ready and, and I was affected by that and, so I need I need to take a step back. So I'll know the indicators are there. This time I am taking it slower um, because there does there is fear that comes with this. A lot of fear. You know I am putting myself out there, and um, it's quite scary at times. Some weeks is better than others. Some weeks I kind of don't even think about it. And I love it. And then there's some weeks where I'm like, oh, should I put that out too soon? Should I have done this? Should I have done that better? Etc. Etc. But I understand, 
first of all, by putting content out there for me is just to get the content out there. My building my YouTube channel is going could take years, right? It's me adding value. It's me posting and learning and getting more experience about it. What I like, what I don't like, um, how I want to present my videos, um, evolving with the graphics, etc. Um, how I want to lay it out. There's so much to learn. So my perfectionism has to take a bit of a back seat because I will go, well, I need to just put it out there, right? And then I can start to refine it as I go. But yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm facing my fear again. And, uh, and I'm proud of myself for doing that. Um, and every time, even though I'm not getting a following, that, that will take time, I'm getting feedback from people. If it's a call that they're reaching out for help or if it's a call to say well done or or a little text message or it means so much and it kind of, if I'm having a bit of a wobble, I'm like, yep, yeah, I'm giving value. You know, it, you know that old famous saying about if you're, um, if I help one person, then it will be worth it. So, if if you're questioning about you know facing your fear in some area in your life or or do it, then I wholeheartedly encourage you to to face it. So, if you're thinking about something that's going on in your life and you want to face it or you want to stretch, you want to grow, there's something that you want to do and you're frightened of doing it. Please do it. And if you're worried about the effect that might have on you then why not make sure you've got someone that you can give get feedback from someone that you trust that you can talk to about it so that when that overthinking happens or you start to feel a bit uh wobbly that you can kind of get that feedback from people that that are supporting you that you know love you and are in your corner and so they'll give you the feedback that you need you know just to give you the encouragement because it can be lonely sometimes. I, I know how lonely it can be. Um, and sometimes people don't always understand. Like I know, you know, it's kind of hard in the early days of my, you know, before I kind of got recovery. Just, I wanted it so bad and I wanted to face it. But, um, you know, not everyone understood addiction, or you know. And so it was scary to put myself... Um, out there and 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 face it because it felt quite a lonely process but it's turned my life around and i'm proud of that it's one of the biggest things i can say whole height i'm brave and i love that i love that label i look um face those fucking fears head on you just get stronger wiser braver that we know we're going to evolve and grow and that we're going to be that great role model for the people around us, for our, our children or our family, etc. And, um, you know, pass that message on that facing your fears is fucking the only way forward, really. Because um, the truth is, getting out of your comfort zone is where the magic happens. <laughs> it's true. You know, staying in your little comfort zone and in small... But, also, I need to say, your comfort zone isn't a bad place. Of course it's not, you know. It's comfortable for a reason. Um, and sometimes you need that, right? When life life can be tough, um, even if it's just that you're working hard or you are evolving or you are stretching and you're doing some work on yourself or whatever it is, or you're keeping busy looking after your family, whatever you're doing, you know, we need our comfort zone, right? It's um, our sanctuary to get that rest and recovery that we need. Um, but if we don't move out of it at any point, then it gets stagnant. And then for me, there's consequences for that. And I think for every human being, there is there are consequences for that. Um, so stretch, grow, learn, face those fears, guys. Um, thank you um, for watching and please like comment subscribe why not it's free and hope to see you in the next video sending lots of love guys Mwah.